Hi, I'm Christopher Sursell from the Plasma Dynamics and Electric Propulsion Laboratory, or PEPL, at the University of Michigan. Here at PEPL, we do experiments to dig into the physics of all kinds of plasma-based propulsion devices. And these thrusters that we work on can range from highly optimized, efficient thrusters to wacky advanced concepts that uh, are only going on a thrust hand for the very first time. But in order to do these types of testing, we actually have to have the devices in hand to work on. So how do we get them? Well, in this video, I'm going to dig just a little bit into the thought process behind the design and fabrication of a new experimental propulsion device. We've released a couple of videos now on this channel focusing on rotating magnetic field thrusters, or RMF thrusters for short. These thrusters have not been heavily studied at this point, which means that a lot of the physics that drives performance is unknown and unexplored. In fact, we were the first group that we were aware of to put one on a thrust stand and directly measure performance. But this means that almost all the information we've learned about RMF thrusters so far was gained from studying one device, the Peppel RMF V2. And while we love this little guy, he's not all that effective, with efficiency peaking at less than half of 1%. So what's on the wish list for a new RMF thruster, and how do we make any of that stuff happen? Before we get into that, though, we should touch on what's actually going on inside of an RMF thruster so that we know what we're even designing for in the first place. There's a link in the description to a video that does a really good job of explaining what's going on. So I'm just going to do a really brief crash course here. First, let's establish what the thruster looks like. We can use mechanical design tools to model the structure of the device and get a good cross-section for illustration purposes. The key technology here is the rotating magnetic field, which we set up inside of a cone with some neutral gas like xenon or krypton and some seed plasma. Electrons in the plasma have a really hard time crossing magnetic field lines, so when we spin the RMF, they get dragged along with it. This makes them crash into the neutral atoms stripping off more electrons in an avalanche of ionization until there are very few neutrals left, only positive ions and negative electrons. All these swirling electrons create a strong circular current which can push off of a steady magnetic field that we set up using electromagnets. The whole mass of plasma is then ejected from the thruster like the bullet from a gun. So what's the problem with the RMF V2, our most recent design? Well, from what we understand, we lose almost all of the energy that we managed to put into the plasma by one of two major loss mechanisms. First up, radiation. Most of the power goes into producing light. When the electrons and ions crash into each other in a certain way, they lose energy and that energy goes into making the plasma glow. And our goal is to make a thruster, not a light bulb. The denser the plasma, the more of this radiation loss we get. So we'd like to be able to reduce the density a bit. Second is thermal conduction to the walls. The electrons in the plasma in the RMF V2 thruster are pretty hot. Over 100,000 degrees Celsius, in fact. So anytime they come into contact with the thruster walls, they conduct power to the walls through heat. Reducing the density will help with this, just like the radiation. But so will changing the shape of the thruster to reduce the surface area where the plasma contacts the walls. A large part of our proposed solution is a geometry change. We're going to make the thruster shorter and wider. These two effects together will tend to reduce the plasma density inside the device, which will help a lot with that radiation loss and also reduce the contact area between the plasma and the wall, which will help with those wall conduction losses. We're also going to mess around a little bit with the size and positioning of our electromagnets so that we can have a highly tunable magnetic field. We also choose to make the walls of the thruster out of Pyrex. It'll allow us visual access for high-speed photography and also allow us to have a curved, flared wall to the thruster body. If no magnetic field lines intersect the thruster wall, we can reduce wall contact even further. This choice of Pyrex and that curved wall will allow us to follow the magnetic field profile with the thruster body itself. That way electrons, which are free to stream along the field lines, don't immediately just run into the walls and lose energy. Putting this together, along with some upgrades to how we form the rotating magnetic field, we can arrive at a buildable design. To ensure axial alignment of all the pieces, everything is mounted to a sturdy backplate. We also added in multiple locations to inject neutral flow. The result is the Peppel RMF V3 thruster, a new and improved device with a lot of operational knobs to turn to explore the physics of this thruster concept. We're excited to dig into some of these questions about how the RMF thruster behaves under diff conditions and figure out how it might be improved further. Thanks a lot for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment with any questions you might have.